Hi, I'm Ryan with Rapid Spectra Solutions, and today I'll be showing you how to use our online database that gives you access to over 70,000 filters that we have in store. So this is uh, an example of what the database looks like. You have the graphing area, which is graphed wavelength by transmission. So it's showing you how much light's getting through the filter at specific wavelengths or colors. Um, and over on the left, you have the list of filters that you can refine down as we'll get into uh, and the nav bar up there. So what makes this database so special? Well, Rapid Spectra Solutions as a company prides ourselves on already having what you need on hand. And using this tool, you can not only see what we have on hand, but because of the transmission graph, you can already see if it will work for you. So you can refine down the things that you need and you can choose a filter that's going to work exactly for what you want. And you can send us the name of the filter and we will find it for you, send you a quote, send it on its way. Um, it couldn't be simpler than that. And because we don't have to make the filter, we can um, get it to you so much faster than the competition can. So if you're looking for an optical filter, why not take a few minutes and check out our database? You can see up here on the nav bar, there's the filter search button. And side note, if you are looking on mobile, uh, you can find the nav bar in the top right of your screen. There's gonna be three bars. You click on them and you have access to these buttons as well. So what does it look like when I click on it? Well, it gives you access to Plenty of refinements. Uh, there will be more refinements in the future as well. But uh, currently, as of this video, there is um, center wavelength and full width half max, which are the two primary specifications for a bandpass filter, being um, what wavelength of light it's centered on and how wide of uh, the bandwidth is. And then you also have access to cut on, cut off, and angle of incidence. Those are primarily used in uh, long pass and short pass filters, but you might have a different purpose for them. There are also refinements available for finished filters and sputtered filters. Finished filters are filters we have available that are already in rings, ready to go, pre-cut. They just need to go out the door. Um, so if you are looking for something very quick, with that with no labor costs, that's gonna be the one to go to, but don't limit yourself to just finished filters as oftentimes any other filter is as easy as either cutting it or just getting it situated in a ring or whatever your needs are. Um, and the sputtered filters, it's just a special way of making a filter. Um, if you know you need a sputtered filter, it's there for you, but I won't go too much into that in this video. Um, underneath the sputter filter box is that empty space. Now that empty space is where your refinements go upon being selected. And here I can show what that looks like. So here we are at the database. You can see when I go up to filter search here, here's that same box. Um, but if I type something in, like 520, you can see here's where the selections are. Since I have a um, tolerance of 10 nanometers. It's going to show me everything within 510 and 530. Um, and you can see the same thing, but put in 20 here. Uh, half bandwidth is another word for full with half max. So you can see that that's between 10 and 30. And I can either X these out individually, or I can hit clear refinements and that'll get rid of everything. And you can see down here, there's also the, uh, amount of results for your refinements and that button to clear everything. Okay, so next we have the part lookup section. This one, very brief, very simple. Uh, it's a search tool that lets you find any specific filter. While it can be used to discover new filters, it's primarily used to find the same filter again. Two examples of that would be if you had done searching before or even in the same session and you've changed your refinements, uh, you can type in the uh, filter name, those uh, highlighted ones you see on the left, and it will come right up. Or 
maybe we will send you a filter that we're thinking of sending you for your problem and you can go onto our filter database and actually look at what that looks like. So you can decide for yourself if that's uh, what would work for you. So you won't really be using this feature unless you have a filter that you specifically want to look at. Uh, filter search is more for the discovery of new ones. Okay, so there's also this arrow that leads to further refinements. Uh, so you can see there's a sorting and a filter type. When I select sort, it gives me some options of sorting between center wavelength and max transmission. Now, center wavelength helps you narrow down uh, specifically what you want. If you want a 535, you can use this to sort it by center wavelength and then look at the 535s and also look around it if you're not finding anything you specifically want. So let's go over some extra tools at your disposal real quick. So if you look over here on the left, you have two buttons that come up when you right click on a filter name, add to graph and download CSV. So what add to graph does is instead of creating a new graph with the filter, you're able to overlay like you see on the screen. So for this example of this screenshot, I had clicked on the 475 AF and I had right clicked and then add to graph for the 595. So it lets me compare them together. So that's really helpful if you are struggling to decide between a couple filters of what would look best, or you're looking to order uh, multiple for some filter set that you need. Uh, that way you can compare them together and see how well they work out, if there's any overlap. And download CSV, pretty self-explanatory. It'll download it in a comma separated value format um which is a, a very common uh format for data so um and then if you right click the graph it allows you to download it as a png and there's also um zooming options as you can see on the controls from the help menu uh on web you just click and drag you'll see a gray space and you'll be able to zoom in on it i think you saw that earlier and if you double click, you can zoom back out. On mobile, it allows you to just, you know, move around the graph with your finger, zoom in and out with pinching as you would expect. And also to right click on mobile, uh, you just hold down your finger on either the filter name or right outside of the graph. If you hold down your finger on the graph, it won't detect that you're trying to right click. It will think you're trying to move the graph around. So just something to keep in mind. If you hold it down on like the axis, you should be good. Okay, so let's do an exercise. Feel free uh, to pause the video once the exercise comes up uh, and do a little practice, or I'm about to go through the solution and it should give you an idea of uh, what it might look like to use this tool. Okay, so if I want a finished 525 nanometer bandpass filter with a full width half max of 49 nanometers, what does that look like? Okay, so here I am at the database, and I'm looking for a 525 nanometer bandpass filter with a bandwidth of 49, right? So I know I want a 525 nanometer bandpass filter. So 525 in there, and since I know I'm looking for a 525, I can go ahead and reduce this tolerance to zero. And I'm looking for a 49 nanometer bandwidth, which is very specific, but you never know what you might need. So I can go ahead and type that in here. So put that to zero. And I know I want one finished because I want it to be ready to go out the door, right? So if I click on that, okay. Well, there it is, right? That easy to use. So I can go ahead and click on that. And remember, if I ever want to clear all of my refinements, I go from one result back to the 70,000. So this is that filter. And you can see I actually have it on hand right here. Uh, it's as simple as you send us the filter name and we can just go and find it. And actually, this is the filter that I used as that green interference filter in the previous video. So um, if you remember that green filter, uh, that's this. It's a very, very nice filter. Okay, so that's the solution. 
and with this filter name now if you wanted to look at it but didn't want to go through those steps you can just type that right into part lookup and it'll come up and as you saw that's what it looks like all right so let's discuss some future improvements um so there are going to be other translations on this if you have any specific languages that you would like it uh, to be accessible in please let me know um, currently there's talks in doing uh, Japanese um, so anything else again please let me know uh, and for the inventory cleanup uh, those filters with max transmission over a hundred percent I'm going to weed those out and also streamline how we update the inventory at the moment it's a long process to update uh, the filter database but in the future we'd like it to be real time that when we scan these and catalog them they're just up and available and so for new refinements like I said earlier uh, we want to add being able to search by size but not only that by shape um, so that you can find exactly what you need just in case um, the filter you selected ends up being too small for the mobile UI it's gone through several changes it's still not perfect and uh, still can look a little clunky in the future I'd like to be able to change it to something that's a lot more intuitive and designed for mobile at the moment it's designed for web and we've moved things around to make it function and look at least decent on mobile but in the future I would like to completely revamp it for mobile and potentially even make an app um, and I know that there's plenty of bugs to fix uh, while we've weeded out most of them. If you encounter any bugs, please let me know. My email is right there. It's also in the description. And you can just comment if you have any issues as well. And I will do my best to not only help you sort those out, but also to fix them in the back end. Um, so thank you so much for watching. And uh, please let me know what you think.